The Battle of Chancellorsville took place in May of 1863 and saw the continuation of the Battle of Fredericksburg. Union and Confederates were still around the time, uh, still around the town, but yet a new change of command had happened for the Union. They were going to try to move their superior numbers around the outnumbered Confederates. Uh, Robert E. Lee only had about half the amount of men, but he was going to do something very different in this battle. Hooker was dr- was going to try to move around to outflank Lee himself. He had the men to do it. Lee had to protect Fredericksburg, but go around him. But he was going to send part of his troops to go attack this. So while Hooker is moving over the Rapidan and Rappahannock River, seen here, Lee was going to divide his smaller army to attack both sides. Uh, Union headquarters here was at the Chancellor House. Chancellorsville is not actually a town at all. It's closer really to the wilderness, but the Chancellor House is where some of the heaviest fighting uh, would occur. So as Union troops are moving in, they're completely surprised uh, as they're making their push here at Slocum's attack to see Confederates all of a sudden attacking them under McLaw uh, along the Orange Turnpike uh, and Plank Roads. This was surprising. Meanwhile, the Union was trying to make a, a diversion on Fredericksburg, and because Lee had to send so many troops out west, they were able to occupy Fredericksburg, something that was not able to happen in December uh, during the actual Battle of Fredericksburg. So while the attack is out west, Lee decides, along with Jackson, to do a big flank maneuver to outflank the Union who are trying to flank. Uh, they moved around St. Catherine's Foundry here, it was an old furnace here, and they, Jackson's men came out around the wilderness. This was on the extreme end of the battle. This would be right behind the Union lines. Uh, and they really didn't expect anything to be happening because the Union was the one that was flanking. They did not expect an attack. And you can tell that because basically they had minimal weapons here to defend. The Confederates come storming out, take the Wilderness Church here, able to push back uh, to this tavern that was overrun. Um, it was such a surprise. Union troops were not ready for it. And Jackson was able to push back the numerically superior Union forces uh, easily. Uh, in fact, the Union abandoned the Hazel Grove here, which would be a real problem for them because the Confederates almost immediately put guns on there and could fire on through the Union center. Problem is, is that after the first day of fighting, Jackson was kind of surprised uh, and trying to find different lines, but was unfortunately shot by his own men while trying to figure out exactly where he was. Uh, Jackson would have to be uh, taken off the battlefield almost immediately and General Jeb Stewart, seen here, uh, would act as his replacement. So without Jackson, this was going to be a very different fight, and the fight wasn't over. Uh, on May 3rd, there would be new fighting as, as the Confederates were trying to push back. Again, still completely outnumbered, were pushing the Superior Union back. The Fairfield, uh, the Fairview House would be kind of the last desperate gamble of, uh, of buying time for the Union to reconsolidate a new defensive line. Uh, the Fairview House must have been just a grisly scene with artillery strikes and wounded soldiers just everywhere. Thankfully, Hooker re-established a line around the Bullock House, one that was much, much harder than the Confederates to take. But all of this essentially unnerved Hooker, despite having more men, and was able to retreat. Uh, the Chancellor House was in ruins, and despite having more men, Hooker moved back over the Rapidan and Rappahannock River uh, he didn't want to lose more of his men. Uh, this was seen as just an absolute triumph because Lee now was going to take his move and move back towards Fredericksburg. Meanwhile, down south at Fairfield Plantation, uh, this is where uh, Jackson was taken. He was wounded and his army amputated, but eventually would die here on May 10th. Um, this was really seen as a blow to the Confederacy as, as he was seen as a bigger uh, hero than even Lee. Uh, Jackson would be buried in Lexington, Virginia, Western Virginia, where he lived and fought. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Union forces would be slammed back by Lee, who, realizing that Hooker had been defeated, came and took uh, surprise General John Sedgwick here at the Salem Church uh, along the Orange Plank Road to Fredericksburg. And again, completely outnumbered, were able to push the Union troops back in an absolutely bloody battle. The Confederates lost many, many men, uh, but this was only able to be done so because General Jeb Stewart, who took over for Jackson, was able to keep pushing the Union troops back, despite being outnumbered. 
And so with this, Hooker sent all of his men back over the river to the relative safety and gave Lee an absolutely brilliant victory of countermarches and counterattacks. Um, the only thing tempering it was the death of General Jackson himself. Uh, the battle would be memorialized in the Red Badge of Courage by Stephen Crane, who wasn't actually at the battle nor lived during the Civil War. And the Union Army would be pushed back up towards Washington. Um, General A.P. Hill would be General Jackson's replacement, although he himself would die later on at Petersburg. At the same time, Henry uh, Daniel Sickles sorry, uh, would learn a lesson at Gettysburg where they abandoned uh, the uh, Hazel Grove, and he would perform similar actions at, at uh, Gettysburg. Uh, Union reactions were appalling at Hooker for his loss of troops, but in the South, it was a big victory, but the death of Jackson really, really overtook it. I, I know I've mentioned this before. This was really the turning point. They still have a memorial set up for him at Chancerville. It's, it's the biggest area uh, within the park um, along the, uh, the Orange Plank Road. Uh, General Hooker would be uh, relieved of command shortly after the battle, uh, and Lee himself would be renewed. He would reinforce his army and make another invasion of the North, and that invasion would take him to Pennsylvania in a small town about two months later called Gettysburg. <laughs> 